Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Mark Shrip, and I'm a crisis psychiatrist. Here we have, once again, our Maltese expert or international expert, Professor Chris Barbara, who's the head of the pathology department at Marta Day Hospital. Chris, thank you once again for being with us. Really Good appreciate morning. it. Good morning. Chris, so we've come out of quarantine. Most of the world is out of quarantine. What's new or what should we know about? No, actually, nothing's new. I think what's, what, what we now know is we are more intelligent than the virus. We know how to handle the virus. Um, so we know that social distancing really works to, to get, not to get infected. But actually, summer is on its way. So the sun is shining. That emits lots of UV light. So if we had a bench in the street or in the garden or by the beach, in winter, the virus survives for a number of days on this wooden bench. While in summer, it only survives a few hours. So the transmissibility of the virus is much less during this period. So we know that this virus has its seasonality as well. So, so now it's... is the time when we're seeing really new few cases. Okay. Every day we find two or one cases. While before we used to find 30 or 40 cases. So how many are we sampling on average every day? How many people? We're, we're, we're sampling close to 1,000 people every day. Okay. okay. And with 1,000, we usually used to find 20 or 30. Today we're finding one or two or nothing. Okay. So, so we're doing really well for these reasons, because of the seasonal variability in the transmission of the virus. Okay. Now summer is coming. So it's all against the virus. It won't remain viable. The UV will denature the virus yeah, automatically. So tell us a bit about okay. this. How does UV kill the virus? Uh, we can't say it kills the virus because the virus is non-living. We say okay. it's, it's, it won't be viable. The protein will be denatured and it cannot attach to a receptor in my lung. So it makes sense to go to the beach not... and to stay outdoors then? Yes, but... If the virus is infecting a person and the person is infected with the virus, the UV will do nothing to that virus in the person. So the virus can still jump from one person to the next on the beach. So you can't shine UV down your throat and exactly. kill the virus. Exactly. And don't do don't it, Don't do please. that. Of course, right? that's important. And please don't inject any fluids or anything in your Absolutely veins or anything not. down your This is extremely important. Follow the advice of your doctor. So, Chris, can we lower our guard now or should we continue being vigilant? No, I think we're human beings. We're super intelligent. We should remain vigilant all the time continuously okay we know there is less transmissibility from fomites from inanimate objects okay? what's a fomite fomite is a bench surface clothes cloths and so on anything around us Everything which we can touch which is, or which is not living okay? okay where the virus stands on surfaces now these are much less dangerous if they are on the outside because okay. of the sunlight Okay. If you're on the inside, the danger remains the same. I see. Okay. Does it make sense to buy a UV lamp? Some people are talking about getting UV lamps yeah. to disinfect the area. But you have, you, yeah, you have, you have to make sure you get the right, the right equipment. Yes, because it can be harmful to the body and the skin, exactly. and it's very important. So, so, so not on living. Things. So please beware. Okay. So when we speak about viral load, right now, what if you can take us a bit back? What is the viral load? And what is it at the present moment? Um, the viral load remains the same. So if someone is infected and is symptomatic, the viral load will be high and he will still be shedding lots of virus. So it's the number of viruses shed per By, by a person. By a person. Okay. Um, when we speak or when we cough and so on, we are emitting large numbers of viruses. Now, from recent studies, because everything is recent with COVID, Indeed. it is said that you require 1,000 particles to get an infection. Okay. And when someone coughs or sneezes, they emit 50,000 particles. Okay. So you have to be very careful. That's why a lot of people wear the mask, so that they prevent the shedding of the virus to okay. others. Okay. So masks, visors, 
Those helps to prevent shedding. Sanitizing. Okay? Sanitizing helps you from getting the infection. Everything okay. is still everything is still important. If don't touch your faces, wash your hands. That all remains the same. We are intelligent beings. We know that soap and water will make the virus non-viable. Okay. We know that the UV light from sunlight makes the virus non-viable. These are all in our favor. Let's use them. So it makes sense for tourists to come to Malta because it's sunny then. And okay. There's a lot of sunlight. For, for them, yes. For them, it yes. Depends we'll if they are infected here. or not. Okay, but again, so it does make sense to go to countries which have more sunlight or remain in countries which have a lot of sunlight. It's, it's not only that. You have to go to countries where the RO factor, the transmission factor, is low for okay. any reason. Okay. You can go to countries where the transmission factor is really low because the whole population is really careful. Right. But you can go to countries like Sweden where there were no restrictions, where the R factor, the transmission factor, was very high. I see. Okay. So they have to be very selective. Indeed. So apart like from ap absolutely. So if, apart from UV and a warm temperature, are there any other protective factors or environment factors or other variables? Against the virus. Against the virus. Humidity is one of them, and that's something really good for Malta. We're an island right. surrounded by water. Our climate is all the time humid. So a high humidity is better. Of course, because the mm. virus is less viable. Salinity. You have well. a lot of salt okay, that so is against the virus and in our favor. A Mediterranean country, exactly. therefore, weather. And that is another reason why we were successful as well. Fantastic. Okay. okay. Chris, we were talking a bit about sort of what the next step is or the next wave. Can you envisage or speculate when we're going to have, if at all, a next wave? Uh, the variables are, are too high. So... It all depends on so many different factors that I can't say whether we'll get a wave next week or in the next few months. Hopefully we will never, we might never get a second wave. If we all remain vigilant and we are all careful, for sure we will not get a second wave. But can we say that as the weather starts getting worse, as the temperatures drop? Yes, when, when the temperatures drop, it, it, it's a crisper type of air with less humidity. This will take the factors in favour of the virus, okay? okay? But if with those factors in favour of the virus, we continue the social distancing, the washing of the hands, the wearing of the visors, the not touching of our, ha of our faces, um, the wearing of masks and so on, then the virus can do nothing right. just the same. Chris, there's a lot of news out there and a lot of theories. Can you re perhaps confirm the fact that vaccines are very important for health, isn't it? And they do save lives. Can you confirm for that? For sure, yes, of course. We've seen polio, we've seen measles, we've seen mumps, rubella. And so people should continue getting their vaccines. The rigor. smallpox, of course. Remember, we in Malta had nine COVID deaths, okay? We have had so many deaths from influenza. We've had so many other deaths from other infectious diseases. Yes, yes. So we're, we're all focusing on COVID, but there are so many other vaccine-preventable diseases. All this fear about vaccines, okay, there are more and much many more advantages than disadvantages against the vaccines. Okay. So it's always better not to take risks. Prevention is better than cure and take your vaccine. vaccine. We hope to get a vaccine against COVID. Okay. Chris, in psychology, there's something called health anxiety, hypochondriasis. Essentially, I have this overwhelming fear of contamination of infection. Do you have any message for people who right now, if I may, are probably a bit more, the world is probably more concerned of, on the psychological component, or it's a close second, if not a first now, compared to the physical. We've done a good job, and thanks to you and your team, uh, with respect to the physical aspect of the virus. What about the psychological aspect? What what uh, what suggestion do you give to these people? No, I, I think we can all do things for our own self. From our end, we are specialists in the area. So don't try to go into areas where we are trying to have a strategy. You just follow our instructions. Mm -hmm. And I think if you follow our instructions and do nothing else than that, for sure you will do really well, okay? Because it seems we've taken the right decisions Absolutely. all the way through. Absolutely. Don't try to go 
further than that to do more than what you are supposed to do. Okay. Just do exactly what you are told to do and you'll be okay Fantastic. for sure. Thank you. So that would be as a crisis psychiatrist and Chris as well who has a special interest in mental health, we are seeing an increase in people who are worried, who go on social media, Google, and it's important that people ask, and it's important that people question, and I think Chris is in agreement with this, but as Chris is saying, go to the right source, speak to the right people, make sure that the information you get is verified by established scientific bodies. I, I can confirm what you're saying, Mark, sometimes I go on Facebook, I go on these social media, mm -hmm. and they say, now, now I, 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 I issue all the swab results, and I'm reading on Facebook. Today we had 20 cases. Why lie? No, we only had one or two. Okay. So I'm saying, who is this idiot who's writing all this fake news? Be careful. Let, because scaremongering, remember the fear of the virus. The first time we had an interview together, the reason to have these webinars, and thank you very much for your uh, patronage, is precisely to this. It's precisely to fight the fear before we fight the physical virus. So please reach out. We have enough crisis as it is. And yes, people are in crisis because of this fear. Get the right source, verify it, and listen to the experts. Of course, you have a right to ask. Of course, you have a right to question, but get the right information. And if you know anybody out there who's in crisis because of this anxiety, against the background of pre-existing psychological problems, because let's not face it, all other crises are happening in the world, the recession or an alleged or threat of recession, the economy, we're all in the same pot. We're all in the same, as it were, sphere. One, one thing, Mark, sorry for interrupting. Please, please. But we handle viruses which are much more infectious in containment facilities. Ebola virus, all these viral hemorrhagic Which are very vicious and deadly. Stuff. We are very intelligent. We know how to handle them. We handle them and we keep smiling. So this is the same thing we have to do there with COVID. Go, precisely. Be intelligent, we're humans, the virus is just a bit of protein, for sure, using our intelligence, but we have to really know what we're doing, and everyone knows the instructions we've given, for sure we will beat the virus. We should actually get Professor Chris Barbara to a psychology crisis clinic as well. Dr. Barbara, thank you very, very much. Okay. So it seems like we're winning, but we have to remain vigilant. I have been Dr. Mark Schwerep once again for this webinar. Thank you very much, Professor Chris Barbara. Watch out for the next one. And as always, let's all be members of our crisis, of this global crisis team. But if you need help, reach out. And as always, enjoy yourself, but stay safe. Goodbye.